Okay, so I just want to start this video off with this kind of disclaimer, where I do not condone any sort of annoyance or hatred or pestering of the devs or dev in question of the game I'm about to go on a tirade about, uh, because I believe in constructive criticism. So if you see this video and you agree with my take, also go ahead and give constructive criticism, but don't be going ass to the dev, because they're just somebody who made a video game. So... Don't be an ass. Thank you. Anyway, what are we here to discuss today? I'm here today. Does not matter who I am. I'm just a nobody. But I'm here to just talk about something that has caught my attention. It enraged me when I first found out about it, but now I'm just kind of in a meh state about it. And that is this video game called Dragon Audit. Now, the game itself has not actually annoyed me. Because, no offense, I don't think the game could annoy anybody. I really don't think it could. It's not warranted. But there's something that happened in the game. But obviously you need to know more about Dragon Audit to begin with. So I'm going to go ahead and explain what Dragon Audit is. It is a game you can purchase, I think, off Steam. Um, keep in mind that everything I'm about to tell you was from a 70-minute live stream that I saw of it yesterday. So, you know, I might miss a detail or two or I might miss something. Anyway, it's a game where it's exactly like the title says. It is a visual novel slash puzzle solver type game where you are a tax auditor that lives in a city and you are promoted so you have to leave said city to go audit the monsters that are outside of the city including but not limited to this dragon now obviously it's not a real dragon it is a dragon girl because it's a visual novel and you know there's a whole romance thing now this is just me being brutally honest the game looks like it was made for the ps2 which is fine. You know, one of my favorite games of all time is Shrek 2 for, I think, the PS2. I was also on the GameCube, I'm pretty sure. Like, hopefully editing me isn't lazy and shows a picture of what Shrek 2 looks like right now. Because, literally, it's just... It looks trash. But it's fine. Because I still enjoy the hell out of it. So a game can look trash and still be fine. The second thing with this game, and this isn't even what I'm trying to rant about, this is just me trying to give y'all context to what this game is. I'm also going to be throwing screenshots of the game up as we go, hopefully, unless editor me is lazy. Um, So we have, as I just said, the graphics don't look the best, but that's fine. Um, the story, aka like the text and just the storyline itself, they were written by an elementary schooler, which is once again fine, you know? Like... The best way to describe this game, for anybody who has seen it, is it looks like something somebody made because it's their college final or something. It's like their coding final. It is literally what it looks and feels like. Uh, like, there's really stupid stuff that happens in the game. Like, literally, you use a tank of gasoline to blow up a tank that magically lands on a roof. Like, you're not, you're not supposed to expect a whole lot of seriousness from this game. But that's, once again, that is completely fine. I, personally, from watching it from the first 10 minutes in, I classified it as a meme game in my head. It's like those games on Steam where it's like 360 no-scope simulator and has all the Doritos and stuff in the thumbnail. Like, I classified it as one of those games immediately. Granted, I would never play this game myself because, no offense, it's $10. And it did not look like something I would ever pay for in my life. But... The reason that games like this can gain traction is because of streamers and YouTubers playing them either on stream or recording them. And the reason I'm bringing this up is, trust me, I have a point. Just follow me. Uh, so, like I said, I was watching a live stream on the channel SuperTF. If you don't know on Twitch, pretty big guy. You should follow him. He's cool. Uh, but I was watching him play this game. And essentially, if I were playing through this game on my own... I probably wouldn't have gotten past the first 10 minutes simply because the game is so, like, not bad, but just, it's very cringe to say. And obviously, you know, cringe has been oversaturated as a word, but that's the exact word for it. It's cringe. Where, you know, but because I was in a setting where there's literally 6,000 other people in chat, as well as the streamer who were all laughing at the stupid things that were happening before us together, we were able to not only be okay with the game, we were able to enjoy it quite a lot. You know, we were all 
enjoying ourselves. Everybody was, you know, it was, it was a Twitch chat, so you had your Omega LOL spams and things like that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then congrats, you're too young for Twitch. Sorry, I hate to break it to you. But we were all actually enjoying the game, despite it being a meme game and not that well um, put together, but enjoying it nonetheless, which was great, phenomenal. We then got to a point, like I said, we watched, I watched about a 70 minute stream on it because at around the 70 minute mark, um, after, I think it was after the character had finally met the dragon or whatever, the tax guy, um, where the game actually asked just an arbitrary question while we, while the streamer was moving around and said, Hey, are you streaming or recording this game right now? And obviously he was streaming. So he clicked yes. So I'm going to read this. I'm now going to read out what the game said verbatim, as well as, if I can, throw out screenshots of it. But, so ask if you're a streaming recording, please answer honestly. And he clicks, obviously, yes, I am streaming. And this is the exact text that pops up within the game. Cool. Thanks for sharing the game up until this point. We appreciate it. Now that you've seen a good portion of the game, we ask to please end the recording slash streaming of this game at this point. Hang on, I have to wait for it to flip ahead to the next... Thing. This allows players a chance to experience some of the game themselves. And to be honest, I can't afford to make games if everyone just watches the game instead of buying it. And the, and so that is exactly what the game says. Hang on, I'm trying to make sure there's not... Yes. Okay. Again, I do really appreciate you sharing the game with your friends and followers, but ask you not to share the whole game. Please play the remainder of the game privately. And this is what the game says, and then immediately it cuts back. So you could, and it doesn't like cut off your game or anything like that. There, there's no way for it to detect or anything like that. So in theory, you could just keep playing. But I think that is the dumbest, stupidest, most asinine thing I've ever seen in the history of video games. As I established before with this game, the story is cringe. It's literally written by a third grader, which that's a valid criticism. That's not me trying to be insulting, saying, uh, like a third grader could have wrote, written this story. Like there was no point where I was invested in the story. The gameplay itself was made for the PS2, which once again, that's completely fine. There's some great games that were made with terrible graphics. I fully like it's not a rag. It's simply me pointing out a fact. On top of that, you charged $10 for this game. And you are then asking streamers, content creators, and all this other stuff to just stop playing the game. Because the devs' mindset with this, and it's something you can clearly tell, is they think that you are invested enough in the game at this point, if you watched it to this point, that you will go buy it and play it yourself. And I hate to break it to you, but I'm not going to show the Twitch chat um, from last night from the stream uh, that I was watching this in because, no offense, they got a little bit rude and toxic. Well, some offense, yeah, they got rude and toxic. Fuck them. Um, but so, literally, not a single person in that chat planned to buy the game. Nobody was sitting there thinking, buy the game. Also, like I said, we're about 60 to 70 minutes into the game. Somebody went ahead and looked up because obviously you know even despite the devs asking this within the game itself there are people who have still completed youtube let's plays of it like people were finding them last night and somebody found that there's only about 20 more minutes worth of gameplay after this point there's that's all so all the dev is doing is stopping you from seeing the, or asking you to stop from seeing the ending, thinking that you as a viewer will go buy the game, when in reality, um, as both the streamer and the entire chat room agreed, it just kind of killed everybody's, in. even the slight interest anybody had in the game was killed. Because like I said, nobody there was invested in the story. It's not a good enough game to warrant being invested in the story. But we were all once again enjoying it because there were 6,000 of us all laughing at the stupid things that were sad. The reason I'm ranting about this now is because this is just a small indie dev doing it now. But what happens if, I don't know, Resident Evil 8 Village just came out? I haven't played it, 
But let's just say randomly after halfway through the, whatever the halfway mark of the game could is for anybody who's played it, you could tell me in the comments. What if just halfway through Capcom was like, okay, you're not we're gonna DMCA you if you continue to stream or record this because we want people to experience the story themselves. Like, it would set such a dangerous precedent if this were to actually ever become an issue, you know what I mean? But this is something that's been realized by companies for years, and that's why they allow streamers and stuff to play their games. Like, for example, I've never played Resident Evil in my life, and I'm just using Resident Evil as an example because it just recently came out. But, um, there was a streamer, uh, once again, the same streamer, Super TF, was playing it, and I watched little bits and pieces of it. I was like, oh damn, this looks kind of interesting. I might play this myself, even though I've seen little bits and pieces, and I know what happens in the end. Um, but I still might play it myself simply for the gameplay and to experience the story for myself. I think it's just such a dangerous precedent to set. Once again, I'd like to point out that because of the chat after, after we saw this and the streamer himself, we all just immediately had a negative feel for the game. We no longer enjoyed the game at all. But before we saw this, despite all of the flaws I pointed out the game, we were all enjoying it. Like, if I had it in my Steam library, I would have rated it highly. I would have actually left a rating, and I don't really do that. Because I would have had good memories of the game and what it had. But because of that one incident of you sitting in there and saying, LMAO, we don't want you to play the ending because we think people will buy our game. Like, it just leaves such a sour taste in your mouth, and it ruins the entire thing. Like, it ruins the mood, it takes the fun out of it. So, this is a poorly worded rant, I guess. But I don't know. I just needed to voice this, throw this into the void. And, yeah. Dragon Audit. Just. <sighs> Dragon Audit, you disappoint me. That is the best way to say it. Dragon Audit has disappointed me. I'm going to get up out. I've said everything. Goodbye.